A top focus amid the heat wave warning issued by the Met Department, Prime Minister Modi held a high-level meeting. He reviewed the preparedness for the period between April to June as the temperature is above normal uh, in several parts of the country. In fact, Prime Minister also reviewed preparedness of the health sector. According to the Med Department, temperature ranging between 40 to 42 degrees is being reported in several parts of western Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Well, uh, this is going to be a hotter than usual summer and so the Prime Minister held a meeting today. It's an important meeting and in this meeting, uh, IMD officials were present and also PK Mishra, the Principal Secretary in the, to the Government of India and also, uh, you know, Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla was there and uh, advised in, in, in the... Um, uh, you know, Amit Khare was there. So, uh, very important people there. And uh, remember that the Health Ministry and the NDMA uh, have already issued uh, advisories with regard to what needs to be done to sort of ensure that there is adequate provisions of ORS and, uh, uh, you know, um, and that the hospitals are sort of equipped to handle these heat wave cases. Also, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, addressing the problems of forest fires and also elections are coinciding at this time. So, many people will be out, not just camping but also voting. The IMD department, like you rightly mentioned, has already issued heat wave condition warning for the southern part of India. And as days proceed, you know, the similar conditions will also be witnessed in western part of India. That's something that IMD has already said. So this meeting was to ensure that the advisories of NDMA and Health Ministry 6 are sort of like, you know, uh, put in order. And the Prime Minister, we are told, also took uh, you know took took stock of uh, you know uh, the situation in hospital hospitals for the prepar preparedness of uh, not just the hospitals but also health professionals and uh, also you know polling centers so NDMA officials and also health ministry officials are present at this meeting Shifting focus now and hours after news coming in of CBI arresting BRS leader K. Kavita in the Delhi liquor policy case. Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any petition filed by the CBI in court regarding her arrest. Remember, Kavita is already in Tihar jail after ED arrested her in the same case. Just few days back, CBI had questioned her in the excise policy case. And the agency is likely to seek her custody on Friday. Now, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has hit back at the Congress for uh, calling BJP leaders dictators. He reminded the Congress of the emergency era. In an interview, Rajnath Singh said that he could not even attend his mother's last rites after she died due to brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at the time. Brain hemorrhage was denied. So, 27 days in hospital, I was in death. But I couldn't come to that. I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't give up. मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं Election news now and campaigning has picked up pace as we inch closer to the first phase of general elections scheduled next week. And the heat was on in Rajasthan as the biggest faces from BJP and Congress, Prime Minister Modi and Congress MP Rahul Gandhi campaigned in the state. Prime Minister once again took a dig at Congress targeting them on corruption. Rahul Gandhi hit back, calling it BJP's diversionary tactics. Temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan. With elections just a week away, it is Operation Desert Storm as the Congress and BJP double up on the campaign trail. The Prime Minister in Dholpur Karoli touching an emotive issue, drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for Eastern Rajasthan that has been waiting for the Eastern Rajasthan Canal. Project for years that will supply water to 13 districts. Rajasthan में पानी के संकट को बड़ा बनाने वाली कांग्रेस ही है। केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया। उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने प्रस्ताचार किया। आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा। ये मोदी की गारंटी है। The Prime Minister will again hit the desert trail on Saturday, campaigning in Barmer on the west and Dosa in the east. Rahul Gandhi, who was also in Falodi, spoke about the Congress's outreach to farmers and women voters. ये वायदा, ये वायदा नरेंद्र मोदी ने अग्निवीर बनाकर ये वायदा तोड़ा है, और ये अग्निवीर स्कीम जो है, भाई और बहनों ये आर्मी को नहीं चाहिए थी ये आर्मी ने नहीं कहा कि हमें अग्निवीर चाहिए ये नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने पीएम
सीएम ऑफिस से अग्निवीर योजना लागू की है जैसे ही हमारी सरकार आएगी अग्निवीर योजना को हम रद्द कर देंगे राजस्थान इज इन फॉर अ लार्जली बाइपोलर कॉन्टेस्ट and the bjp is hoping to score 25 out of 25 for the time even as the congress hopes for a change to open its account in rajasthan in lok sabha 2024 with harsha kumari singh bureau report ndtv the former congress spokesperson rohan gupta has joined bjp He is among the series of former Congress spokespersons who have joined the party. Now, speaking to NDTV's Vasudha Venugopal, Rohan Gupta said that he did not like Congress's stance of launching personal attacks against wealth creators. One of the most uh, vocal, visible faces of the Congress Party, former spokesperson of the Congress Party, Rohan Gupta, has joined the BJP today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gupta, for speaking to NDTV. In the past few days, we've seen an exodus of uh, spokespersons. Many of them cited functional problems uh, as uh, functioning as uh, uh, you know spokesperson of the Congress Party. You also named one person. Tell us, apart from the ideological contradictions, what were the functional, operational problems that you faced? See, I'll tell you the way. Congress party is a big national party with a strong legacy and there is expectation of people that the voice of the people the concerns of the people the sentiments of the people are respected when this gentleman whom i have not named i have just told that there is ram in his name he became the communication in charge and one of the allies of the party he insults sanatan sanatan is not about me or anybody or bjp it's about our our sanskruti if somebody questions sanatan disrespect sanatan do you feel it is too much to ask that we should counter or at least raise the strong voice against it no you tell me you give me one press if it is been addressed they are questioning me today i am challenging you tell me one press why it has not been addressed if sanatan is question is this too much to ask for they have formed one gadbandan in name of the country and you are making people like kejriwal as part of it whom you have accused like anything as being called traitor being with khalistan for corruption excise can congress party has done the press conference is the leaders of congress party what is it that you have to ally with those people and what kind of message you will take to ground when we go to debate we ask this question to us as a soldier of party obviously we cannot question but at least inside we ask the question that are we have that sanctity you are not allying with them in punjab what message you are sending there is no communication so i think it is like comedy of error if your narrative is not clear and there is too much of contradiction when you have contradiction people will not trust you we are going on national tv to show the trust of people in the party to communicate the vision of the party but if we are not heard if we give them the ground feedback and they are not heard they are so arrogant ke nahi ye sab chalo aap apna kaam karo jo bola jata ho karo i think nothing is left for us to uh, continue mr gupta in the last few years we've also seen congress take a very strong position against some corporates and also wealth creators would you say that was problematic for the party and also for the country i think again i am saying uh, the same wealth creators you know they are contributing in congress run states you tell me if you are doing one press conference attacking one industrialist from delhi and maybe after two days you see the same industrialist doing mou with your statement in uh, chief minister in rajasthan or telangana how would you go and sell this to the people if you have question on other party you question on their policy how does create wealth creators being attack like this on personal level has help party you tell me one benefit party has received by attacking the industrialists i am not talking about one particular thing but this shows the leftist mindset now congress was never like this congress has been after the liberalization congress was has promoted the policy and now you are totally against that आपका जो कोर था वो आपने छोड़ दिया आप पूरा लेफ्टिस्ट हो रहे हैं आप जो लोग देश विरोधी उसके साथ आप जा रहे हैं आप सनोथन को विरोध आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा यू हैव नॉट लेफ्ट एनीथिंग इट्स नॉट अबाउट पार्टीज बैड सिचुएशन इलेक्शंस आर वॉन एंड लॉस्ट दैट्स नॉट अ बिग थिंग बट वेन यू आर लिविंग योर कोर आइडियोलॉजी यू आर रिमूविंग एवरी वॉट आर द मेन थ्री कोर इश्यूज रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सनातन राष्ट्रवाद एंड एंड द रिस्पेक्ट फॉर द पीपल हु हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द जी ऑफ द कंट्री आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा आप और दूसरा चौथी चीज फॉर पीपल लाइक अस हुव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इफ यू कैनॉट मेंटेन अवर सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट all to our dignity also why should we be there nothing at the cost of self respect last question sir you also uh, talked about your ailing father and did the congress party reach out to you at some point absolutely not nobody called me during my worst phase and that was the trigger point see i understand the point when party gives me ticket you know it is my responsibility so the day he was admitted and i had to give my ticket back i spoke to the leaders and i did that thing i i wrote that letter on the prescription the back of the prescription in gujarati that was my majburi next day i addressed the press i told in front of media that i have no objection with anybody whoever party appoints as the candidate i will completely support them 
I for the, the opening of the karela, I paid money also. That okay, no, this is my responsibility. If anything bad is there in my head, why should I do that? After that also, I was convincing my father that please allow me to fight the election. I had to kill my aspirations one side to fight the election for my family, and other side the same people are doing conspiracies against me. You tell me if you have contributed 15 years for one party and they don't even trust you, not even call you in four five days, how should I save my face? How can I be there in that party after that? Because I was very sure that same gentleman has sold the narrative that this is done purposefully. After that, I had no right to be with the party. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. News from the South now and we turn our focus to constituency of Virudhunagar where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor-turned-politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. Popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense to get involved in politics, it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroots political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroots management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there. Shops will be closed, and we will not. They will not have. We will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the Parliament, and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Khan. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think. Yeah. The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Vidar Agar. For NDTV. We'll slip into a short break at this point. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. Now, six children died and dozens more were injured after a school bus overturned near a village in Haryana's Mahendragarh. Police have arrested the school bus driver, principal and school secretary. The bus driver was allegedly drunk and speeding. This tragic incident has once again thrown the spotlight on, rule, on rules followed while selecting staff for school buses. Grief, anger and despair at 13-year-old Vansha's home in Haryana's Mahindragar. Vansha's grieving parents, who lost their only son in a tragic bus accident in the village, feel they have nothing to live for. His grandfather, who sent him off to school this morning, is still in shock. Vansh is among the six young students killed by a drunk driver who rammed a private school bus into a tree seriously injuring over 20 students on board. Not only was the driver drunk, but the school bus was not fit to ferry students. The driver abandoned the dying and injured children and fled the spot. This was a bus that was ferrying over 20 students uh, to a school, a private school here in Kanina. And the back portion of the bus rammed into a tree. And just looking at the bus, you can imagine the extent of the tragedy. The, the insides of, of the bus here, absolutely tragic and absolutely devastating because all that is left, you know, here, uh, these pieces of glass scattered on the floor. This, this was a very tree that the bus rammed into during the accident. And in fact, the remains of the bus scattered all around here, you know, the water bottles of uh, kids uh, who, who, who were injured, who lost their lives here. In fact, uh, you know, shoes also lying here, school shoes. So, 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 this is a GL public school, one of the few private schools in the district which was locked up soon after the incident with the principal, a school trust secretary and the bus driver arrested by the police. But there are many unanswered questions. Why was the school open on a government holiday? Why were there no checks on the vehicles carrying students to school? How was an irresponsible driver allowed to ferry the children? फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्रे भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पांच साढ़े पांच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके the children who died have turned into statistics already but for the families of Vansh, Ricky, Anshu, Yuvraj, Akshu and Satyam and the others who have been scarred for life, this fateful day can never be forgotten. He was just 13 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Dreams, aspirations that have all been shattered. Who takes accountability for the tragic death of these six innocent children. In Mahindragarh with camera person Xavier Thomas, Vedant for NDTV.
और वो गाड़ी वगैरह का सारा इनकी अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है इन लोगों की जिसको इन्होंने पूरा तरह से ठीक नहीं किया है और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पर हमने तीन व्यक्तियों की जिसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने कर ली है और जो छः जिसमें टोटल डेथ हुई थी इसमें हमने उस सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरान्त उनकी डेड बॉडियाँ हमने उनके घर के हवाले बारिश आगे कर दी थी International news now and OJ Simpson the NFL Hall of Fame star whose 1995 acquittal in the so-called trial of the century for the brutal murders of his ex-wife and a male friend gripped the world has died he was 76 and was battling cancer his popularity grew with the post NFL career as an actor and an ad pitchman where his appearances made him one of the most recognizable faces in the country but fame turned to infamy after the savage murders of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman in a suburb of Los Angeles his acquittal in October 1995 after a 9 month trial was greeted with disbelief by many Americans who had followed every twist and turn in the arguments during the trial So it's time for us to wrap up the show but before we leave images coming in from across the country of celebrations of Eid ul Fitr uh, as i said videos and images are coming in and two of bollywood's biggest stars shah rukh khan and salman khan were seen celebrating the occasion with their fans take a look and thanks for watching